CPU performance is so important in Microsoft Flight Simulator due to the complex physics calculations that are taking place. Scenes can't be rendered graphically until the flight dynamics have been determined, which makes this simulator very CPU bound. So will VR performance benefit from the additional cache found on the Ryzen 5800X3D? The Ryzen 5800X3D has been shown to significantly boost frame rates versus the rest of the Ryzen 5000 series, beating out even Intel's flagship chip, the i9-12900KS. And early results from the flat screen monitor version of Microsoft Flight Simulator are very positive. But how does that scale to VR performance? To work this out, we have pitted the Ryzen 5800X against its beefier cached cousin, the 5800X3D, along with 32 gigs of 3600 C14 RAM and an RTX 3080 Ti. We've picked three very demanding scenery areas, as well as a slightly less complex example for completeness. We tested flying over New York City with Sam Scene 3D's scenery add-on, flying over London with the London City Airport add-on from Orbex, and doing taxis around the beautiful but very demanding Bristol add-on scenery from Pilot Plus. And finally, flying traffic patterns in the British countryside around Coventry Airport for a less demanding test. For all of these, we used two headsets, the Valve Index using the Steam VR ecosystem and the HP Reverb G2 using Windows Mixed Reality. The graphics settings were the same for all tests, but with the Reverb G2, we used the OpenXR toolkit to apply some upscaling and foveated rendering, and we used motion reprojection with Steam and no reprojection with the Reverb G2. Now, a word on this. Reprojection will fix the frame rate at 45 frames per second, so it can add in the missing frames and boost the frame rate back up to 90 frames per second making average frame rates less important. It's frame timing that matters here. That being the amount of time it takes the CPU and GPU to render one frame. So to achieve a frame rate of 90 frames per second for a 90 hertz display, the frame timing needs to be 11.1 milliseconds or less, or double this to make use of smooth reprojection. For the Reverb G2, we are not using reprojection, so average frame rates play a far more important role here. So, on to our tests. In New York, with the Valve Index, we still saw an average frame rate increase despite our previous caveats, even when using motion reprojection. It jumped up to 42.9 frames per second with a 5800X3D, where the 5800X put in 42.4 frames per second. Looking at CPU frame timings at different points around our flight, we saw the amount of time the CPU took to render the frames drop by almost a quarter. We flew a loop around Manhattan where we saw a drop in frame timings from approximately 20 milliseconds to around 16 or 17 milliseconds. We checked this at multiple points and consistently saw this result. This helped deliver far more consistent frames on the 5800X3D and this delivered a noticeable smoother experience. The most dramatic example of this was when we overflew the heart of Manhattan. Our 5800X really struggled with violent fluctuations in frame timing. With this never within the magic sub 20 millisecond region that makes motion reprojection work smoothly. The 5800X 3D was able to store far more data in its internal cache and fared much better, consistently delivering frame timings below the magic 20 millisecond threshold, again delivering a far smoother experience in the headset. With the Reverb G2, we never saw the frame rate above 43 frames per second, with frequent dips down into the mid and high 30s, where the 5800X3D consistently maintained a higher frame rate, always above 45 frames per second, with frequent climbs into the high 40s and the odd spike into the low 50s. Both headsets had a much more pleasing experience with smoother, more consistent frames 
with the 5800X3D. We saw similar results flying over London with the Valve Index, with an average frame rate increase of about half a frame per second, even with motion reprojection on, which may not sound like a lot, but remember the headset is fixing the frame rate to make best use of reprojection. So we saw average frame rates up to 43.7 from 43.2, Frame timings past the O2 Arena for the 5800X sat around the 19 or 20 millisecond mark, so right on the threshold for reprojection, and there was a healthy reduction with the 5800X3D to around 16 or 17 milliseconds. We saw large fluctuations as we flew past Canary Wharf with the 5800X, delivering frame timings somewhere between 60 to 20 milliseconds where the 5800X3D delivered a much more consistent experience once again with lower frame timings at 16 or 17 milliseconds with far smaller variation in these numbers. Similar results to New York with a Reverb G2 with none of the FPS drops down into the 30s that we saw with the 5800X and the 5800X3D consistently delivered average frame rates above 45 frames per second. The ground is probably the most challenging area in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and this is where we saw the greatest improvement in performance with the 5800X3D. This add-on scenery for Bristol is complex with lots of textures and models to load, where again, the 5800X3D really benefited from that extra cache, delivering a very smooth experience during our taxi. Taxiing past parked aircrafts with the 5800X saw frame timings between 15 and 16 milliseconds, and these were down with the 5800X3D to 12 or 13 milliseconds. That's a frame timing drop of approximately a fifth. And whilst we didn't see major changes in the average frame rates, with this largely locked 45 frames per second for reprojection with both processors, there were none of the noticeable stutters that we experienced with the 5800X down into the 30s on the Reverb G2, with the 5800X3D reliably keeping frames above 45 frames per second. We were even able to add in complex avionics such as the TDS 750 NXI, and we've definitely seen an adverse effect on performance when we were testing the Cessna 414, but with the 5800X3D, there was none of that whatsoever. We were able to taxi with ease and even fly traffic patterns and we saw absolutely no change in performance from the baseline avionics and the 750 NXI. In simpler areas, there was less benefit from the additional cache, where we saw identical average frame rates of 49.9 frames per second for both processors but we did still see a frame timing reduction of approximately two milliseconds measured on both our downwind leg and short final approach to the runway, providing more CPU headroom for physics or avionics calculations. So in conclusion, GPU performance continues to play a significant role on frame timings and average frame rates for VR. But given just how CPU bound this sim is, there are gains to be had from the extra cache. There were noticeable improvements in frame consistency and smoothness, as well as a healthy bump in average frame rates, which of course were more noticeable with motion reprojection, but were still detectable even with motion reprojection on. The extra cache appeared to help with avionics, such as the TDS 750 NXI, and if you're building a new system which is focused on virtual reality performance for Microsoft Flight Simulator, then the 5800X3D is a very solid choice. But we would recommend focusing on tweaking settings if you have a 5000 series Ryzen processor or a 12th gen Intel CPU. Check out my guide here on how to max out your VR performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator for free. As always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are. Stay safe in the skies, and I'll see you in my next one.